couple of months ago with Army Corps engineers, Fish and Wildlife, DEC, uh, Parks, and Public Works. In order to get the dune line rebuilt after Superstorm Sandy, it's like they said, well, it's the piping plumbers. Yeah, I, That's what I said. Now, wait a second. I said, okay, I'll give you that because I did see them on the beach on the ocean side. Right, right. I walked every inch of that road from where the gate is up and down that road. There's not one sign of piping plover. I walked the access from the road to the ocean side, which we have closed off also. Right. There's not any bit of evidence of pipe and clover nesting at all in those areas, and it's closed off. And that's the opening day of striper season. We have a very short season of fish, yeah. and I, you closed it off. I, I don't know why. I don't know the answer. That's the answer. Yeah. 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 I own a tackle shop on this road. In 52, the business is open. My old, my old man since, owns it since 81. I'm doing it 20 years now. My children want it. Lighter yeah. beach access for campers and fishermen. Federal mandates have reduced the dunes to substandard levels. The vegetation of the dunes further jeopardizes our protections. The dune system set up to periodically fail, causing washovers, which is right across from the Mastic Beach homes. This creates more plover, plover habitat, though, uh, forcing our beach growth. This is, there's thousands of people that use this beach every weekend. Yeah, I just want you to have the access right, it needs to, to come fish and wildlife Correct. to do that. I am all for it. Relax the restrictions here. You know what? We, we've created habitat for fish and wildlife for the piping clover, and now they want more. I've never once, not once, seen a piping clover nest on Burma Road or on the open beach. Always in the dunes, under the or the hogs come in. They're not a very indigenous bird up here. We go to South Jersey, they're about a million. And we ride up and down the beaches and nobody says anything. We never heard of piping clover with a truck as far as I know. I've only seen two in 40 years. So why are they making such a big deal for us to run down the beach and Burma Road when we're never going to touch these birds? I guess. We want to work with the federal government and conservation plan to ensure access. Impossible, it's impossible to implement unless these mandates are removed. They did tell us, the Fish and wife, Wildlife did tell us, even if you come up with a plan, there is no guarantee that we'll approve that plan. And the minute one bird is taken, if we allow people to access the beach, not only do we be fined, and I will let the commissioner explain that, but they can just shut it down completely. We cannot get on the beach, the beach is closed. And the reason, the pipe and plover. The is also, but if I have to choose between pipe and plover and the residents over here in Mastic Beach, children, I'm supporting the residents of Mastic Beach. Children, thank you. The federal government is spending millions of dollars right now to build dunes along Fire Line to protect the mainland. And at the same time, they're telling us they want to eliminate the dunes that protect the Mastic Beach area. <laughs> uh, the biggest problem is that if there is a take, which is uh, could even be a bird being chased off its nest and abandoning the eggs, is considered a take. It's a $25,000 fine and possibly jail time. Um, I don't know of any over areas and allow park system here to maintain and get people out on the beach by allowing access through the two washover areas on Burma Road, which we have been. We've been working with the Army Corps engineer who have been Army Corps of Engineers who have been very helpful and allowing us to put up snow fence lined with silk fence to keep any possible chicks from, from crossing across. So this way it'll, it'll allow us to manage our own area and keep access all the way out to the end of the inlet. And that is our, our mission for this summer is to keep that Burma Road open and available to everybody. Uh, my name is Frank Barcourt. I am the owner of Smith Point Bay and Tackle. I never in my life thought that a bird would put me out of business. I never thought I would lose my livelihood due to a bird. The financial impact on William Floyd Parkway alone has to be in the millions when this beach is closed. My kids, most important to me, business is business. I'll find another job. My children can't use a beach. I've been on this beach since I'm a little boy, diapers. Now I'm supposed to lose this for my children, five, eight, ten. Where do they want to go in July? Dad, we want to go down the beach. Where do they want to go in August? Dad, we want to go down the beach. It's not fair. 
I would genuinely from the constituents. I'm doing a very good job lately. I'm trying to keep this beach open. I don't feel that it's fair to my family. I don't feel that it's fair to the people that live here in Master Beach. My family's been here since the 40s. So what? You let us all get flooded out and save this bird? What else to do, but the financial impact is absolutely extreme. It will end up putting my business uh, out. And uh, are you kidding me? Tell that bureaucrat to come talk to my children. Tell them, ask them why daddy's not making the money he used to make. Ask them why, you know, let, let me to let him talk to them. These kids that love the beach, love to go flying guys, love to build sand castles. Let them talk to the, those children, not me. My kids and my kids' kids. That's who needs to be spoken to. That's who needs to be thought about. The land, uh, it's amazing that if, if this is an environmental agency fish and wildlife, that they don't recognize the value to even the vegetation, they're talking about uh, addressing that as well. None of that makes any sense. The federal government just spent millions of dollars replenishing dunes for our safety. It's people versus uh, less than six, by the way, nests that I know of last season. That is outrageous. People's lives. To, to, to bring down the height of a dune and to remove the vegetation that keeps the sand in place, it doesn't make any sense. I don't understand. If you remove the dunes sooner or later, I mean, what's the long-term plan? You remove the dunes, you get more wash over, then there's no nest either. Yes, we'd like to give the support to the commissioner of the Suffolk County Parks and also let him work with Fish and Wildlife because they are the governing body and we all got to stand behind them and just do what we can to keep Burma Road open so that we can fish right through the season. There's no other answer to it, and we just got to work with them. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Or, or change the legislation that's presently in effect to allow for communities such as this to thrive and prosper. Something sensible. And Who makes the actual call to shut the beach down due to the plovers? It would, it would basically come from my office. From your office. I spoke with park employees at Hither Hills last year about their infrequent closures due to the plovers, and they said that their conservationist wasn't as proactive as the county's. Is this a personal opinion, or is this a... I, I think their geography is completely different than ours over there. Um, I, you know, I can't comment on what they do in the state parks. I don't know. Okay. So, but I, I don't think they have the same situation that we have here. It's, I it's, think they have higher dune lines that separate the areas that create an, uh, uh, maybe an easier, easier pass for the vehicles to get by where there isn't any problem of interaction with the birds. So that could be it. Where we right now just have our Burma Road, which was washed out, and they weren't allowing us to put up the fence in certain areas because they wanted the plover to go from bay to ocean. So I think that, that probably, I'm, I'm assuming, is the end. The difference. Fins, that we should remove ourselves from fins. I would like to do that, but again, we have to go to Congress. We have to get that approval on the federal level. Um, I'm just tired of getting the phone calls every year, and it seems like it's getting worse, and the time period that the Outer Beach is being closed has gotten worse. Uh, we have accommodated Fish and Wildlife more than anybody could ask, and we, after Superstorm Sandy, you know, we were rebuilding the dunes, and now they want to flatten the dunes. That just doesn't make sense. It's asinine, and they do need to change their policies. This outer beach here is not like any others. And I today. It takes an act of Congress to take us out of that place. You want to lobby our congressmen and our senators to do that for us? We can do that. Let's I think we have that. a better chance of just getting them to relax their rules as it applies to, these, to Burma Road and to our dunes, and let us go back to what we had before Sandy an awful lot. We're asking for them to let us build our dunes back up to where they were before Sandy, to re-establish Burma Road so that we have a way of bypassing the beach and getting these, these folks on and their, and their uh, vehicles <coughs> to the outer beach without impacting the, the plovers nesting area. They didn't have yeah. this. We have a bridge. If they want to come over with their dozers and whatever to try and do this, I would not recommend it. Not in this bridge right now. So hopefully we won't be approving any permits anytime soon. <laughs> Bought the business in 1981. It has been a tackle shop since 
the late 50s. We actually still have receipt books that are labeled 196. This is one of the third buildings that's ever been built on William Floyd Parkway. It's always been a tackle shop. My father bought it with my mother in the early 80s. I came to help my father run it about 20 years ago. My children love it here. They How many kids help. you got? I have three children. Um, unfortunately, what's going on with this plover issue is you are putting more and more pressure on small business. Um, and we're going to disappear. You know, there'll be none of us soon. It's done Do you? correctly. Now, when we were uh, forced to pay a couple of years back for our saltwater license, we raised something, I can't quote the numbers, but close to $12 million. 500 k was put back in the industry. The rest of the money went to the general fund, which that year bailed out the MTA, as far as uh, I know. And yours. It affects every business on this road. Every, I can guarantee you, you cannot walk to one business on this road besides maybe a nail salon that is not affected. Every deli, every bodega, every 7-Eleven, every gas station. The surf shop has absolutely got to be taking a beat. Everybody, beer distributor, uh, um, liquor stores, you know what I mean? Everybody go down, goes down to the beach, they're there for the day, they want to come home, they're going to have some dinner, they stop at King Cullen, they get their, you know, their, their, their burger meat, they stop at the liquor store, they get a bottle of wine for the wife. Um, so I believe that every single business is pretty much affected on William Ford Parkway. Who doesn't want to come off the beach and stop at Carvel? Sure. He's here. My father actually gave him his life in the line of duty as a policeman here. His name was Jack Burkhardt. If you'd like to look that up, he died here in this neighborhood, protecting everybody that lives here. Um, um, my phone number at the shop is 631-281-3766. If anybody would like any questions or, or would like to ask me anything about this or would like to support us, I would be more than happy to uh, accommodate. And your first...